We've seen how nodes and namespaces help us organize our code while it's running. Let's take a look at how we organize and build the source code for our system. ROS packages group together multiple nodes, libraries, and other resources, all around a particular purpose or category of functionality. All of our RoboJackets projects use multiple ROS packages. Our packages often group nodes by high-level purposes, such as perception algorithms or navigation. Packages are the buildable and redistributable units of ROS code, and they're what we share with other developers when we want to collaborate on that code. We can use the ROS2 command line tool to inspect the packages available on our computer. Remember that anytime we want to use ROS, we'll need to source the underlay setup script, running source opt ROS foxy setup.bash. To show the names of all the installed packages, we can run ROS2 package list. To check where a specific package is installed, we can use the prefix option, running ROS2 package prefix turtle sim, for example. Now, while packages are the buildable unit of code in ROS, it's common to be working on many packages at the same time. It's useful to be able to build and manage multiple packages together, which is where workspaces come in. A workspace is just a folder with a special layout that holds several packages and can be managed with a build tool called Culkin. Let's take a moment to talk about build tools. You probably already understand that code is compiled into a form that the computer can understand before it's run. This process is done by the compiler, for example, the GNU C++ compiler called G++. Compilers require lots of special flags and work on one library or program at a time, so we have build systems, such as Make, that help us run the compiler on our full project. Build systems like Make tend to use machine-specific values, like full absolute paths to library files. This can make it tricky to copy projects between different computers. So we use tools like CMake to generate those build tool files from higher-level dependency relationships. In ROS, we use a special extension of CMake called Ament CMake. Ament is a meta build tool that makes it easier for us to connect multiple packages together as dependencies of each other. Finally, Culkin gives us an interface to build, test, and inspect many packages all at once at the workspace level. In practice, we'll only have to interact with two of these layers. We'll define package build rules in Ament CMake files and build workspaces using Culkin commands. Let's take a closer look at the structure of workspaces and packages by creating some of our own. To create a workspace, all we need to do is make two folders. The first is our workspace folder that can be named whatever we want. I'll call this one trainingws. The second is a source folder named src that we place in our workspace folder. This is now a valid workspace, though it doesn't have any packages in it, so it's not very useful. To create a package, we'll go into the source folder and use the ROS2 command line tool. Here, we're telling it the name of the package we want to create and the names of the other packages this one will depend on. In this case, that's the packages for the C++ client library and standard messages. Running this command will create a new folder with a special layout and two important files. Package.xml is our package manifest file. This is an XML file that explains the metadata for our package in a way that Culkin will understand. This includes descriptions, authors, and licensing details, as well as dependencies on other packages. CMakeList.txt is our build system file. This is a standard CMake project file that will contain the rules for building our package. The source folder will contain all of the source code for our package, and the include folder is for any public headers our package might provide that need to be installed as part of a library offered by our package. And that's the entire structure of a package. We could have created this layout and these files by hand if we wanted to, but the ROS2 command line tool gives us a convenient way to generate it automatically. You can customize a lot more than just the dependency list with the package creation tool, so be sure to check out the help text for more details. Now that our workspace has a package in it, we can build it with Culkin. To do this, we'll go back up to the workspace folder and run the command Culkin build. We'll see that it quickly processes our one package, which isn't surprising since we haven't actually written any code. As you do start writing code, you'll use this command to build it. 
Culkin is a very powerful tool that can do a lot more than just build our code. Check out its documentation at culkin.readthedocs.io to explore more of what it can do. Okay, we've built our new package, but what if we look for it with the command line tool? We can run ROS2 package prefix RJ training. We'll notice it can't find it. In order to use packages built in a workspace, we need to source the overlay setup script for that workspace. This is similar to the underlay setup script, but the file is in our workspace's install directory, which Culkin generated. So we'll run source install setup.bash. With that overlay sourced, now our package is available to the rest of ROS. You can stack as many overlays as you want, so you can have multiple ROS workspaces on your machine and still have access to all of the packages. That's it for now. We've taken a look at how ROS organizes our code into packages and workspaces, and how layering build tools like Culkin lets us manage those packages in different ways.